Welcome to Drama Free Healthy Living with Jess Cording. I'm your host, Jess Cording. I'm a registered dietitian, health coach, and author, and I'm here to help you streamline your wellness routine and establish a sane, more balanced relationship with food and fitness so you can reach your goals without losing your mind. On this podcast, we'll talk about nutrition, exercise, self care, mindset, and more. I'll be bringing you interviews and expert insight on the topics that matter to your health and wellness. Welcome back to the Drama Free Healthy Living Podcast. I'm your host, Jess Cording. I'm so happy you're joining me today. I'm thrilled to welcome my RD friend, Francis Largeman Roth, back to the podcast. It's been way too long since we've caught up on here, but I'm thrilled that she's here today to talk to you guys. So Francis Largeman Roth is a registered dietitian nutritionist a New York Times bestselling author, as well as a nationally recognized nutrition and wellness expert. She's the author of Feed the Belly, Pregnant Mom's Healthy Eating Guide, as well as Eating in Color, Delicious Healthy Recipes for You and Your Family. She's also the co-author of the bestselling The Carb Lover's Diet. Her latest book, Everyday Snack Tray, was released in November of 2023. So we're talking all the snacks today. So Frances, in addition to writing some really wonderful books, is also a contributor to several publications such as Today.com, Parents, Parade, and Shape. She's appeared on numerous national TV shows, and she also contributes expert quotes to publications all over the place to help bring healthy food to you and help brands share their message. She's also a member of the James Beard Foundation and the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. So Francis and her husband with, and three kids live outside of New York. So we met back when we were both living in the, well, I was living in Manhattan. I think they were based in Brooklyn at the time. And it's just been nice to you know stay in touch. And just, she's always such a joy to talk to. And I think that you guys are going to love to hear what she has to say about how to use snack trays to add nutrition and fun to everyday eating. We also talk about how they can simplify entertaining. And we do talk about um, things like how she gets inspiration for snack trays, what the process of writing her latest book was like, and also what would be on her ultimate snack tray. So without further ado, guys, let's get to the episode. Francis, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much, Jess. It's great to be here. Yeah, I was I was going back through the archives and I realized it's been like a few years since we last did this. And I I don't know where the time goes. I was gonna blame COVID math, but wow, it's it's nice to have you back. It's great to be here. So for those of our listeners who haven't met you yet, can you just tell us briefly just kind of, you know, who you are, what you're about? Sure. Yeah. So I was a magazine editor at Health for quite a while, and then I left there and started writing books on my own. Uh, I I wrote Eating in Color. I'm very passionate about getting people to eat well, but in a fun way. (laughs) And that's what that book was about. And I do a lot of freelance writing for publications like today.com, shape.com and recipe development. I work with healthy brands to get their message across. And I'm also a mom of three. I, I love to, your books are gorgeous. Like you do, and your, your Instagram, like you do such a great job of making it look fun to eat healthfully. Like, even if I wasn't a dietitian, you know, I, I think a lot of your recipes and the things that you share, you know, they, they're cute and they're fun, but I feel like they also look approachable. Like someone looking at it could be like, Oh, I could, I could do that. Thank um, you. <laughs> because that's exactly what I'm going for. <laughs> yeah. And I, I love you guys, we're going to link to the the Everyday Snack Trays book in the show notes. You can check it out for yourself. It is such a gorgeous book. And I love the topic. I think um, I, I have a partner who loves snacking. <laughs> like I will make dinner and then I just know that right after dinner, he's just, just going to snack. Like he would snack all day and not actually eat meals and be totally fine. But, you know, you also do a great job of showing how snack trays can be healthy and just for our listeners who might not be familiar with what that is, can you tell us briefly what what are snack trays? Yeah, well, they really can run the gamut. I mean, you can make a snack tray out of anything. You know, it can be made up out of your leftovers or it can be, you know, items that you might want to snack on while you're watching a movie. It can be items that you're going to put together to have taco night, or it could just be, you know, at kind of at its most basic, maybe it's cheese and crackers and fresh fruit. 
So you can go, you can go big, you can go small, you can really (laughs) make it your own. I love that. And you know, I think that by the time this comes out, I'm like, are people still going to be talking about girl dinner? But I feel like it's like the way that like, as an RD, I would want people to look at like, you know, like this is like a healthier version of that or like a more comprehensive version, you know, without like the, the diet culture aspect. But I, something I really liked about your approach to snack trays was, you know, cause I think sometimes on social media, we see all these different, like, like put together dishes and snack trays and like, and, but it, it looks challenging, right? We're like, oh, I can't do that. But I really, something I loved about your book is that you have all these suggestions for like where to find trays, what types of cups and jars to use to put little ingredients on. And I want people to check out the book and find out for themselves, but I'd love to here, if you have a few favorite resources that you might want to share for some of the snack tray essentials or, you know, where people might look for, for getting those supplies. Absolutely. Well, one thing that I love about making trays is you really don't need complicated equipment or anything like that, but you will need some kind of a board. I know several people who use baking sheets, you know, like a very clean (laughs) baking sheet with, with a rim on it, which is helpful because then once you put your little ramekins and bowls on it, you don't want them to slide off. And you can use things like ramekins that you might already have or little glass prep bowls, even shot glasses can work for certain things. So before you get, you know, go whole hog and spend a lot of money, you can probably use a lot of items that you already have around the house. But if you're looking to sort of expand your collection, um, I go to places like Marshall's and TJ Maxx and find lots of very, very cute, but very, very cheap items there. And then, you know, for a really awesome set of prep bowls, William Sonoma, you know, they, they always keep those in stock. And for boards, I mean, there are ones that I've found on Amazon. And then there are ones that I've found at places like room and board and, you know, sort of like higher end online stores. So there's so many places that have these types of items these days. And also a set of cheese knives would probably also be a good thing to have. (laughs) Yeah. No self. That's like, I feel like I have so many like kitchen gadgets and like so many different types of like glassware and dishware and like, but like I was doing um something the other day where I needed cheese knives. And I was like, Oh shit, I don't, I don't have those. <laughs> like, it's like such yeah. a random thing. Let's vote. I wanted to chat a little bit because as an RD, I know I tend to be like very functional about the way that I approach meal planning. And, you know, I'm not like people do not come to my platforms for the pictures. <laughs> you know, like I don't do like really beautiful. Okay. I've come a long way, but presentation is not my strong point, but from a nutrition standpoint, as a dietitian, like when we're talking about snack trays, like what are some of the things that, that you love about them that you want people to know are, is important in terms of nutrition? Well, I think the The great thing about snack trays and basically where I came to this idea from was feeding three little kids who didn't eat a whole lot at once. And so they would have leftovers. I would keep the leftovers and out of desperation, I started serving the food in little bowls. And then the light bulb went on because they were eating more in that style of presentation than they were having their plate filled with all these different foods. So one reason why I love a snack tray, you know, a nutrition reason is that you can get kids and grownups to try things that perhaps they wouldn't normally try because it's very, very low risk. You're not putting it on somebody's plate with the expectation that they need to try it or they need to finish it. It's just there. (laughs) And it's, it's, you know, you can dabble, you can, you can take a piece, you can try it or not. So I think that that is a great way to foster exploration without putting pressure on anybody. And another thing is you can introduce, you know, brand new foods that way. Um, Maybe your family hasn't tried, I don't know, persimmon 
And so you're going to put persimmon on your snack tray. And again, it might be, wait, what is this? This looks weird. Or I, you know, I haven't tried this before, but it's another way to present a new food. And we know as dietitians that it can take 15 to 20 introductions to a new food for a kid to try it. I don't know if we have statistics on adults and, you know, trying new foods, but you know, you have to, you have to sort of offer things in a very welcoming fashion for people um, so that they feel like, you know, it's it's okay to try it and maybe not like it. I love that. Taking the pressure off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To your point, I find that adults can be sometimes just as um, challenging in that way. Like I know, you know, I do a lot of like client, client counseling and there's been so many times when someone's like, you know, we meet for the first time and they're like, not going to get me to eat cottage cheese. Nope. Not happening. Not eating. You know, I don't like vegetables. And I, you know, I'm almost like, that's fine. You know, here are some things that if you want to try them, here's some ways to try them. You don't have to, but I, I love the idea of presenting things in little snack trays. I think that, like you said, solo risk and it's pretty and it's fun, colorful. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, for me, it's a creative outlet because, you know, being a dietitian isn't always the most creative uh, (laughs) job in the world. And so I, you know, it's fun for me to do things that are themed, you know, my, my youngest and I start, we're doing a little research last night. We were watching mean girls because we wanted to see what are the food references in mean girls. And can we actually put together a mean girls snack tray? And so, you know, that's not that one in particular will not be intended to be super nutritious, but fun. Right. And, uh, and I think that you can just do so many different fun things. I have heard of people doing ski shootery. So they're putting the snacks on skis. They'll like pack it out in their backpack and then present the food on skis, which is super interesting to me. I think, again, it's just, um, people are looking for, well, snacking has become kind of a national pastime. And I think people are looking for different and new ways to do it. I love that. And I know we're talking about, you know, snacking, um, here, but like, can, how can these be used for meals? They can absolutely be used for meals. And, you know, think about things that you don't need a ton of cutlery for. So tacos, taco night can totally be turned into a snack tray and think about, um, kind of expanding your repertoire in terms of the toppings. So, you know, yes, you're going to have salsa, you're going to have cheese, but maybe you're also going to try a blueberry salsa or, um, or diced jicama or shredded red cabbage and things like that. And again, you know, it's a great way to provide some variety. So, you know, maybe I'll go with some ground turkey meat that I've sauteed with, um, taco seasoning, but I'm also going to have black beans on this tray as well. So providing different options for people. And again, maybe you're going to try something in a new way that you've never tried before. And another thing I want to mention about these snack trays is you're only required to make one recipe. That is it. So you're not, uh, we're not we're not making this super fussy. It's one thing. And then you're buying everything else and then just arranging it a little bit. Oh, cheers to that. (laughs) Yeah. Seriously. Cheers to that. (laughs) Oh my God. I know it gets exhausting. So what about like, if you're entertaining, you know, I would love to hear some of your tips for, you know, how snack trades can help with the, you know, reducing the stress of entertaining. Yeah. Well, I, you know, even though I was a food editor for eight years and had done several photo shoots with you know, meals and, you know, I certainly know how to put a dinner party together, but it causes me a lot of stress. And since this is drama free, healthy living, I, I want to point out how you don't have to stress out. Um, because look, most of us just don't have a lot of time, but that can keep you from entertaining and, and socializing and having people over because you feel like it's just too much or you, you only want to do it if you can do it perfectly. And I have found for myself, I am much more likely to invite people over when it's a snack tray situation. And I don't have to make a protein for each person sitting at the table. Plus, you know, 
two, two vegetables and a salad and, you know, a bread thing. And, you know, that it, it gets to be a lot. And also guess what? Food is expensive these days. So all of those groceries, say for six people are going to add up. If you do a really beautiful snack tray, plus maybe some other little nibbles, people are going to be just as happy, especially if you have a good wine. <laughs> right <laughs> or or some some good beer some craft beer <laughs> on hand and so you can be festive you can make things look pretty you can have enough food for people to feel full without having it be this you know high stress sit down dinner situation oh my god thank you for sharing that i know i i like i mean yes i'm an introvert at heart who are we kidding but you know, I like seeing my people, but oh man, like having house guests stresses me out more than almost anything. I don't, I don't know why it just like sends me into a tailspin. And I, um, we had a Halloween party this year, which was really fun. But at first I was like, so stressed, like, oh my God, what am I doing about food? And I was like, oh, I can do snacks and candy and like, it's all going to be okay. And it was, it was great. And nobody was like, there wasn't enough food. I missed having a good, complete meal. <laughs> like, you know. Good for you. Yeah, I, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> but so when you are, um, so, okay. So I, I'm curious to hear if these are like two different approaches, but like, I'm curious to hear both, you know, if you're thinking about an idea for a snack tray, like sort of what that process is. And is that, you know, when you're coming up with, the development of recipes for the book, um, you know, if that, what, what that, what that process was like, I'd love to hear the, your, the method behind your, your snack tray creation. Yeah. Well, first of all, I did not have a long time to put it together. I had six weeks to not only to not only create all the trays, but also write all these chapters because the publisher who I went with or who chose me didn't just want recipes and snack trays. They wanted narrative to go along with it and to kind of tell the story. And when do I make these? And what are some family stories behind them and things like that? So I would literally get up in the morning, Jess, and this was in the summer of 22. And I would, I would make a tray. I would order ingredients for the next day tray or the, or the next couple of days, and then go to the computer and just, you know, bang out oh checks, and then do it all over again. And for six weeks. And, um, so when I, when I was planning the structure of the book, I thought, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? Okay, let's do seasons. And then within seasons, you know, there are different times, right? So in winter, yes, there's, there are the holidays and everybody's celebrating, but then, oh my gosh, now we're in January and now it's freezing cold and I'm bored and there are no more holidays. And now what do I do? <laughs> yeah. So there are trays to kind of, you know, help you get through the winter. And then there are trays to celebrate spring and all the things that we do in spring. And some of the, some of the trays are truly for holidays. You know, you wouldn't just make them for fun, uh, you know, on a, on a Wednesday night. And then some are truly everyday snack trays. So for things like movie night, slumber party, um, you know, awesome report card date night. You know, you're going to have a date night at home because oops, you blew the budget for the month already. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a date night at home. Um, so I tried to make them very practical, but then the, but then also elevated and kind of what you would, what, what you would want to see. There's one, called staycation. So when you're bummed out that you're not going any place for spring break, but you want to bring those tropical vibes into your living room, you know, what can you put on a snack tray that will help you do that? So th there was a lot of creativity and a lot of like dreaming about what I would want on a snack tray. I love that. And so this episode's going to be going live um, right before Valentine's day. So I'd love to hear some of your you know, what you would put on a Valentine's Day snack tray? Absolutely. Chocolate covered strawberries. You cannot go wrong with those. Yeah. It's so easy to make too. And you can do not just a dark chocolate drizzle, but you could also, I mean, you could dip them in dark chocolate, but then you can do a drizzle with white chocolate or milk chocolate and some sprinkles. And 
Then I love adding blood orange on a Valentine's day tray because it's so beautiful. And again, something that maybe not everybody has tried before. Um, and then like chocolate, 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 but you can also do brie. I take a wheel of brie, oh. I cut it into a heart and you could certainly do, there are no crackers here, but you could certainly do crackers. Um, brownies, you don't have to make the brownies from scratch. You could literally, you know, buy them from the store and then cut them into heart shapes. Um, there are a lot of things that I encourage people to buy from the store. Actually, after reading your book, um, I actually went on Amazon and I ordered some heart shaped cookie cutters. I was like, this is so cute. Why don't I have these? I want to cut all my food in heart shapes now. Yes. So thank you for the inspiration. I love that. I love that. And and honestly, it's such an easy thing to do, but it visually just kind of sends your brain down a different pathway. You know, just it's just a lot more fun. Well, it's just little um, things. They make such a difference, right? And like I think we all need like a little bit of a escape down those more fun pathways these days. Yes, absolutely, especially in the dead of winter. Um, when the days are so, so short and, uh, you know, it's just cold. And then there's another really fun one, a hot chocolate bar. So you make the hot chocolate mix. That is, that is the recipe that you, that I suggest you make, but of course you don't have to make your own hot chocolate mix. You can use whatever you like. And then it's all the things that would, you would use to put on top the whipped cream, the sprinkles, the cinnamon, little sort of uh, mint sticks that you might use as a stir and then little muffins and cookies and things like that, that you would eat alongside your hot chocolate. So, um, I take a lot of inspiration also from my kids. You know, if they, when I present a snack tray and they come running and they're like, Oh, this is amazing. Mom, this looks so great. Then I keep the idea. If they are not that enthusiastic about it, then maybe I need to come up with a different idea. Yeah. So I'd love to hear what are some of their, either their most favorites or if there are any that you were like thought were going to be like, everyone's going to love this. And then they were like, eh. like, I'd love to hear like some of your family's favorites and like, even, you know, and then the, the ones that were maybe not the favorites. Yeah. Well, I will say that there's a slumber party one that I do make. And, you know, it's a combination of of course, things that you're encouraging your kids to eat like carrots uh, <laughs> and fruit, but then I do throw some gummy worms on there because you you are considered to be a hero mom if you have some some gummies in the mix. And then I also have a um, a no bake cereal bar on there as well. That's really fun. And you know the whole idea for a slumber party snack tray is that you've already fed them dinner this is the sort of after dinner time period. And you want to present it in a way that like, they don't have to come back to you again. <laughs> like this is it for the night kiddos have fun. So they do, they love that one. Uh, we also had a lot of fun making a Barbie themed snack tray this summer, which was just, you know, we, we went a little bit over the top and it was totally fun. I got this, it wasn't a cookie cutter, but it was sort of a stamp off of Etsy that had the word Barbie in the Barbie lettering. And we used that to do cutouts of watermelon. And, you know, they thought that was the best thing in the world. So, you know, you, you sort of played into their preferences, but also, you know, you offer up new things. And I have to tell you that my, my son, Leo, who's 12 now, he took it upon himself the other day to take a dragon fruit, which I have put on snack trays in the past and, and cut it up and eat it the other night, even though, I mean, I was saving it for something else, but I was so thrilled <laughs> that he took the initiative to serve that to himself because it was, this is no longer a scary, weird thing. This is, you know, something approachable to him now. So, and I have to, I have to credit my snack trays for that. I love that. That's so, and I, I know that feeling though, when you're like, you're saving it for like something and you're like, oh crap, but that's great that you're eating it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I like that. And that's such a great like case study and how the snack trays can make things approachable to people. So like, 
if you are, I know we were kind of talking about making snack trays for like your family and, you know, like gatherings, but what about like a snack tray for one? Like, I'd love to hear some, cause I definitely have a lot of clients I work with who they live by themselves, but they're still interested in like eating healthy, but they don't really want to do like a lot of cooking. Um, and I feel like a snack tray could probably be great for that. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I think this is kind of where girl dinner <laughs> came out of in a sense. Um, and I don't like the term girl dinner, but I think what it ultimately means is it's for you. That's my, that's my interpretation. I like that. I like that interpretation. Yeah. It's just for you. And I, my family went away this summer for a week without me and I took it, I, I took advantage of that time to eat only what I wanted to. And I made several little, you know, me time girl dinner trays. And, you know, so for protein, I was using things like hummus and hard boiled eggs and I'm a cheese lover. So I pretty much always included some cheese, olives, easy vegetables. So things like the, I like the fancier baby carrots, which you can sometimes find in the grocery store. They're not the little tiny sort of Oh, I know the ones you mean. Yeah, those are, I love those. I'm, I'm very picky about baby carrots because sometimes they're slimy and they're like too hard and like, but I, I know the ones you mean. I love those. Yeah. And they're sort of mid-size, you know, a mid-size carrot. So love those cucumber spears, cherry tomatoes, things like that. Or maybe even, you know, at Trader Joe's, sometimes I'll find tamales. So maybe one tamale would be on, you know, an individual dinner. So, you know, again, if you try to think about things that go together, you know, you could do a Mediterranean style dinner for one that's snack tray style. You could do an Asian style one. You could do a Mexican style one. So I think that can sometimes having a theme can help fill things out a little bit, but obviously that's only if you're planning, right? You know, you don't necessarily have all these items on hand. Um, you can cobble together really whatever you want, but I love to see a protein, a carbohydrate, and then some kind of healthy fat on a tray. That's like, I feel like one day when I'm a very old lady and I won't remember like so many things, I will still be like walking around saying protein, fat, and carbohydrate. <laughs> like, it's just like, I, I, I don't know how many times a day I say that, but it's true. It's like, it keeps you full. It keeps your blood sugar stable. So your energy and your mood are good. Like it's an important thing. It is an important thing. And then, you know, maybe to that, you might add, you know, protein, carb, fat and something fun. And so maybe, maybe for you, that's going to be a small wedge of brie. Maybe for somebody else, it's going to be a piece of dark chocolate, which, oh my gosh, I had a piece of dark chocolate in my pants. And now I realize it's like melting everywhere. This is, this is real life people. This is how it really goes. I, I there, yeah, no, it's, this is in dietitian. We eat chocolate too. My, my clients are sometimes shocked by that when I'm like, yes, I eat chocolate and I enjoy it. And I don't feel guilty about it. We totally do. We totally, totally do. So I think, um, you know, the, but the, What's important, whether you are making a snack tray or just having a snack in general, it's always, do you have the stuff on hand? Are you well stocked? Because when you're not well stocked and when you, you know, it's the same thing as like you're out shopping for three hours and you get ravenous and then, oops, you don't have any purse snacks. Um, well, then you have to go find something and maybe it's not going to be a great option. So that's, that's always going to be the key is do you have stuff on hand that, that you can, you know, pull out of the fridge, put up, pull out of the pantry, pull out of the freezer to put this well-rounded snack tray together for yourself. Absolutely. So if you like the, the burning question, if, if you were a snack tray, but there was a, a Francis snack tray, what would be on it? I know you shared with me some of what you made while your family was out, but like your ultimate snack tray uh, concoction or combination? Oh my gosh. There would be some kind of a truffle based cheese. Ooh. Yeah. I I'm a huge truffle lover and, um, luckily they're now making all these wonderful truffle infused cheeses. So definitely a little wedge of that. I would absolutely include some olives in the mix. I love 
some really nice sourdough bread. So a little chunk of that, probably the end piece. That's my favorite. <laughs> some good olive oil in a tiny little dish. And then, oh gosh, roasted beets would be fabulous. Some sliced roasted beets. And let me think, let me think, let me think. I think some grilled or sauteed shrimp would be perfect for the protein. Yeah. Sounds so good. Yeah, that sounds good. That's a little summery maybe, but you know, obviously you can, you can get those things any time of year. You could also go with a lot of people like soups. So that would be a fun thing to make a tray, you know, surround your soup with all these fun things, maybe, um, some grated Parmesan and, you know, a nice roll or a nice piece of bread and, um, and some other dippers because grownups like to dip too, maybe even like a half of a grilled cheese that you have cut into sticks that you can dip into your soup. That would be another very, very comforting winter one. You are in my brain right now. I have been meaning to get around to trying the the, the grilled cheese sticks um, to dip in soup, and I just have not been able to get my act together. But it's it's on my like list of recipes I want to try because it just looks so comforting and good. Yeah, so good. And you have uh, you have a chili a snack tray too in your book, right? Tell I us do about that one. That is the snow day snack tray, and so that is that is. The idea behind that is you're literally snowed in, although we haven't had one of those days in a long time, Jess. Not that much. Yeah. But yeah, so you made chili, you made some cornbread, and then all your toppings that you'd like to put on top of all that. Um, and of course, serve it with a good beer. Yeah. These are such great ideas, Francis. I appreciate you coming on and sharing with us. This has been so fun. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. And anytime you want to talk snack trays, Jess, just give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, uh, I could use all the help I can get. I like, there's some, like, I'm so like used to just cooking, like, not like from like, like plated meals from scratch, but like I, my brain is so stuck in that, that mode from just like, I don't know, just years of working in dietetics. I'm not sure. So I love um, opportunities to learn to be more creative. So your book has been really, really helpful for that. Oh, I'm that's awesome. I love to hear that. If people want to like learn more about your work, obviously buy the book, how can they do so? They can go to my website, francislargemanroth.com or check me out on Instagram at Francis L. Roth, R-D. And it's Francis with an E. And uh, the book is on Amazon. It's on Target. It's on Walmart. And hopefully at your local bookstore too. Awesome. So we will link to all that in the show notes so you guys can find it. Francis, thank you for coming on the show today. It's been so great to see you. Thank you, Jess. It's been so much fun. All right. Well, all you guys listening at home, whether you are, or maybe you're out and about running errands, you're driving, do your thing. I am so happy you're here. If you like what you hear, consider leaving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. They do help me continue to bring you great guests like Francis. And as always, guys, I appreciate you and your energy. And yeah, we will talk soon. Thank you for listening to Drama-Free Healthy Living with Jess Cording. We'll see you next time.